Hello students, welcome to another video uh, for statics. Um, today we're going to go over sections 2.7, 2.8, and 2.9. Uh, position vectors, force vector directed along a line, and dot product. So let's go ahead and get started here. Um, so 2.7 is about position vectors. Uh, in the previous section we went over force vectors and we showed that uh, a force vector that's applied in 3D space has both a magnitude, a sense, and a direction and we can either using scalar or vector notation describe that force vector. Similarly we can uh, describe the position of an object in space using a position vector. A position vector is defined as a fixed vector which describes the location of a fixed point in space relative to another point. So if we look at the diagram here we see that we have this right hand rule coordinate system uh, X, Y, and Z. We have some origin point O and we have some point in space in space P and the the distance or the, the the distance from point O to point P is the magnitude uh, the uh, the position vector is is has a direction which is associated with the uh, uh, ratio of the uh, uh, components with respect to the overall length and then it also has a sense which is indicated by the arrow saying that it's from point O to point B. So let's go ahead and go into position vectors. Uh, what happens when we have multiple position vectors? So looking at the diagram uh, say we have a position vector RA and a position vector RB. Uh, each of these vectors have components uh, that, that go along the x, y, or z axes. So there's x, a, y, a, z, a, x, b, y, b, and z, b. Now what happens uh, when we want to uh, determine, the, uh, determine the position vector from point a towards point b? Uh, well, we can use the triangle rule and if we were to perform the triangle rule on these vectors RA and RB, say we were to start with RA, uh, so RA starts at the origin, it goes to the head here. Uh, in order to enclose the triangle, we can use the head to tail rule, and we can create the RAB, where the end of RAB starts here, and it extends and connects with the head uh, of RB. And by doing this, we, we find that the triangle rule gives us this equation, where RA plus RAB is equal to RB. And this is going from point A towards point B. And it's important to note that distinction. So when we consider that, if we were to take this equation and rearrange it, we can find the position vector from point A to point B as... RAB is equal to RB minus RA. So the position vector from point A to point B is equal to position vector B minus position vector A. Okay? Uh, notice the way that I uh, indicate the position vector from A to B. So it's RAB equal to RB minus RA. Uh, so when you're actually doing these type of problems or you have a position vector or when you're trying to, trying to uh, relate things to each other, remember from A to B means that it's B minus A, okay? Uh, this is something that is very easy to make a mistake on. Many people make mistakes on their work. It's one of the most common mistakes and you'll lose points on an exam. Uh, so make sure that you pay attention to this rule. Now if we were to take this equation and we were to extend it and break it into the Cartesian vector form, then we'd find that a position vector from A to B, RAB, is equal to XB minus XA uh, uh, times I plus YB minus YA times J plus ZB minus ZA times K. Okay? 
now that we now that we have the uh, Cartesian vector form of this position vector, let's also try to find just the length or the magnitude of the position vector. Um, so r, which we can describe as the uh, magnitude of the position vector, at, or call the length, we can find this using a, a Pythagorean's theorem. So r is equal to the square root of xb minus xa squared plus yb minus ya squared plus zb minus zA squared. Uh, notice the similarities in terms of the equations for position vector uh, as to, to those that we saw in the previous video for force vectors. So now let's consider a force vector that is directed along a line. Uh, so sometimes the direction of a force vector can be identical to the direction of a given position vector. Uh, and if we look at this classic example here, a cable that is affixed to a wall, and we pull on it. So we're pulling on this cable, creating some kind of tensile force in the cable. We're creating a force on the cable. Now that force is going to go along the same length as the cable itself. The force has the same uh, direction uh, a unit vector direction uh, as the position vector of the cable from point A to point B. So the direction of the force vector is the same as the, uh, uh, the, as the direction of the position vector RAB, where RAB is directed from point A to point B. So we're, we're saying uh, uh, RAB from point A to point B. Okay, so they have the so both the force vector and our position vector have the same sense. Now, if we consider this, that the force vector and the position vector have the same sense, uh, and then we can also assume that they have the same uh, unit vector direction. The direction, the, the unit vector, or the, the unit vector direction is the same for both the force vector as well as the position vector. And we can use this to our advantage. So let's go ahead and look at this equation here. Um, uh, considering uh, what we just determined, the force vector is going to be equal to the magnitude of the force times some unit vector, I mean, a unit, uh, uh, some direct, unit direction ver vector um, and that unit direction vector is UAB from A to B. Um, and this is also equal to uh, the force magnitude times the position vector RAB divided by the magnitude of that, uh, of that position vector or the length of the position vector. And this is a fairly useful relationship that we'll use to solve a number of problems uh, particularly problems with uh, different assemblies of cables. Now if we take this equation and expand it by putting in uh, the detailed information, meaning the, the Cartesian uh, vector form of the position vector and the uh, Pythagorean theorem for the length, we get this expanded form of the force uh, vector. Uh, and y you will you know, need to use this full relationship in order to to solve some problems. Now let's go ahead and look at 2.9 which is a dot product. Um, occasionally in statics uh, we'll have to find the angle between two lines or the components of a force that is parallel and perpendicular to a line. Uh, when we need to do these things, so looking at this diagram, when we need, when we have two uh, vectors and we need to find the angle in between them, uh, we can use the dot product, uh, where the dot product is indicated by a uh, enclosed circle, just a, a small circle. It's not like uh, multiplication, it's not like uh, multiplying, where, you know, multiplying is indicated by this, but it's actually indicated as an open circle. Now, a dot product uh, of vector 
A with vector B is equal to the magnitude of A times B times the cosine, cosine, uh, times cosine theta, where theta is that angle in between vectors A and B. The dot product is a particular method of multiplying two vectors, and we'll go into uh, uh, the actual uh, uh, operations needed to perform a dot product. So let's first just look at the laws of operation. Um, a dot product prescribes to certain laws. Uh, for, uh, one of the first, uh, uh, commutative law, which means that you can switch which vector you're uh, uh, multiplying first. So it could be A dot product B. It's the same thing as B dot product A. Um, the law for multiplication by a scalar, we can see that, uh, that the, uh, the scalar property uh, can, can be permutated a couple of different ways. And then there is a distributive law, which shows how if you were to have uh, uh, an assembly of vectors, how you would distribute the dot product among those uh, vectors that are mul being multiplied uh, uh, through dot, well, being dot product. Um, now beyond that, let's go ahead and look at how do we actually perform a dot product. And we can do that uh, by taking uh, everything into Cartesian vector form. So we want to do a dot product of uh, vector A, dot product vector B. So let's go ahead and take it into Cartesian vector form. When we do, what we find is that we have in brackets AXI plus AYJ plus AZK brackets BXI plus BYJ plus BZK. Well, what we'll find when we do this multiplication is that many of the terms that we would, you know, that we would uh, have if we perform this normal multiplication uh, are going to actually go to zero. And this is primarily due to uh, uh, the uh, uh, unit directions, the i, j, and k terms. Uh, so uh, if we look at it, if we look at i and i, so say we just have a unit a vector of i, and we multiplied it by another unit vector of i, then what we would find is, uh, is that it's equal to uh, cosine 0. So there's no angle in between those uh, unit, uh, unit vectors and cosine zero is equal to one. Now what happens if we were to multiply i times j, we'll find that we have a cosine of 90 degrees, which makes that term equal to zero. So considering these types of phenomena, we'll find that a majority of the terms in this multiplication actually go to zero. And the only terms that we will find are the like i, i, j, j, k, k terms. Uh, and a beautiful thing about this is that the i's uh, actually become a value of 1. So we remove the Cartesian form and, and our simple answer becomes a scalar quantity. Thus, the dot product of A and B is equal to AX times BX plus AY times BY plus AZ times BZ, where we're adding these together and that scalar quantity of the addition of these three terms is the dot product of vector a, b, a and b. So let's look at some applications of the dot product. How do we actually use a dot product? So uh, one uh, use is to find the angle between two vectors or intersecting lines. Uh, so say two force vectors or two intersecting position vectors. Uh, what is the angle in between uh, those two vectors? Uh, well, through uh, a little bit of manipulation of, uh, of, the, uh, of the, uh, the basic dot product equation and solving for theta, we can find that theta is equal to cosine inverse the dot product of A and B divided by the magnitude of A times B. And that angle theta must be in between 0 and 180 degrees. Now we can, of course, uh, expand this by replacing the dot product uh, with the actual uh, uh, 
scalar solution to it, and we'll find that theta is equal to cosine inverse ax times bx plus ay times by plus az times bz divided by the magnitude of a times b. And so this is a quite useful property um, that y you may decide to use when you're solving some problems. Now let's uh, consider a, a little bit more complex application. So uh, the application of components of a vector uh, that are parallel and perpendicular to some line. Uh, so let's look at the diagram here and let's say that we have some line in space. Uh, it could be a, a line that's somewhere in 3D space, somewhere in the X, Y, and Z direction. On that line, or intersecting that line, is a force vector F uh, that has an angle relative to that line. We'll call the line line AA. It has an angle relative to line AA of theta. And we want to find the component of the line that is parallel to line AA, we'll call that component force sub A, and the component that is perpendicular, which we'll call uh, force transpose. Um, so let's go ahead and, and find that magnitude. The magnitude of the parallel component uh, FA is going to be equal to the magnitude of the force vector times cosine of theta and it's also equal to the uh, force vector, the, the Cartesian force vector dot product, the unit vector of line AA. Okay. So if we can, if we know the uh, unit vector of line AA, and if we know the Cartesian vector form of force F, uh, then we can very easily, uh, using the dot product, find the angle in between. Uh, those two quantities, or 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 in between that uh, that uh, the direction of the line and the direction of the force vector. Now, the Cartesian vector form of the parallel component, so uh, the actual Cartesian vector form of the parallel component, will be the Cartesian vector F A is equal to the magnitude of F A uh, times the unit direction vector A, which is the direction of line AA. Okay, now this pretty much concludes the content for uh, these sections. Um, you should, you know, after watching this video, uh, read the chapter, reading these sections closely. Uh, there's some small details uh, that aren't included in this video, so it's very important for you to, to read the book. Um, and then come prepared uh, in class to do some t exercises and some quizzes. Uh, thank you for your time. I'm Dr. Stewart. Goodbye.